Hey guys, so Sean is here again, and we decided that we wanted to talk about things again because that seemed logical. Um, and at this point, we've worked on four pieces together, and we were talking and we're trying to figure out what we wanted to talk about and kind of realized that why don't we just talk about the pieces that we've done together and the development of that and how things and our relationship have changed based on getting to know each other and also having played, having worked together for a year? Over a year? A little over, like when Metamorpho was... like was... December 2016. Yeah. Or January. Yeah, so like yeah. just about, a, just over a year. So I guess we start with Metamorphose. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been... I've been following you since a little before the 365. I don't remember exactly when it started, but actually Mark was the one who had recommended that I follow. I mean, of course I'd seen you Tumblr, because right. like, uh, you have I... the main music Tumblr. Um, but I, I hadn't actually followed it until Mark recommended it, and then followed you and saw some of your own stuff and then saw the 365. Actually, when you after you'd started the 365, I thought about at one point asking if you'd be willing to take a couple of really? like, oh, <laughs> the post, and it was just like, I was, I was far enough from being able to work on anything that I thought, like, I'm going to wait until yeah. I actually could say, I will work on a piece then, not like, I will work on a piece in a few months. And then suddenly. Um, and then, yeah, <laughs> you had the idea. So um, I did that. I mean, I'd been hearing, I sort of, like, I'd, I'd heard you, Robin, play Cassandra. Yeah. Um, and I'd probably heard you play voice. You didn't, like, have the vo recording off a of voice. Yeah. So, like, I knew, I knew you were into some of the, like, mid to late 20th century avant-garde stuff um and so i i knew that i could push in that direction mm -hmm. a bit more with with you and and also like you were very helpful with answering questions about, about what was practical and, yeah that, that was still like at that time more in that direction than i had written i think up to that point with yeah you. definitely maybe one except much the oh, same definitely way flute but yeah, you, well, you haven't heard much the same way that Chips don't. That does have quite a lot of tongue rams. Mm -hmm. um, but that, yeah, the Metamorphose was still, like, a higher density of that. Speaking of which. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, so I, I, as I knew Robin had reblogged uh, oh, Escher, Escher. Escher pretty frequently, so, and I liked Escher, too. Mm -hmm. And so, and also the Memorial Art Gallery, which is... Uh, close to where I live in Rochester had an Escher exhibit right around that time so it was good reason to go look at Escher and then do a piece based on that. Um, no I like I saw I saw that piece in my email and was like wait does he actually know this or did he just figure that I liked it because it's in my apartment? Um, yeah and because you reblogged re it. But right. Yeah, it was um, I just figured I knew you liked Escher. I yeah. didn't know he was your favorite. Yeah. But um, Yes definitely. <laughs> but I I, that one, I think it was the hardest piece in that project. Sorry. It was incredibly difficult note-wise, and then I also knew you. So it was the one that I was like, ah, oh, I can't mess this up. Ah, uh, because like, there's, there's an anonymity when you work with composers that you've never met and probably will never meet. Mm -hmm. But at that point, we had talked, and I knew who you were, and I was like, oh, what? I, I can't. And he wrote this one for me, and like, uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so it was, I, I delayed doing it for a really long time just because I was like, I don't want to mess this up. I really wanted to give it, it's, I wanted to give it due diligence. And I still, I don't like the 365 video of it. I really don't. I mean, it, you know, <laughs> well, I understand that it's the 365. You're going, yeah. it, like, it, it's what you could do in basically a day with a little right. prep before. Um, and, like, once you actually performed it, um, and then once you recorded it after that, yeah. like, that was definitely better. There's there's no denying that it definitely improved a lot oh, in definitely, that time. Yeah. But, but, like, I wasn't, I wasn't displeased with the 365 video. I appreciate that. I, <laughs> I still, there's, I mean... There's 365 videos. I there's some that I just don't like. Yeah. But that one, that's the composer submission. I was like, oh, I wish I could have that one back. And I think it's just because I knew you and I knew, and especially at the time we re I recorded it, we had started talking pretty consistently, and so I was like, oh, okay. Like for, for any instrument I don't play, I'm sure there are things that I don't realize exactly how difficult they'll be. Not just like I don't realize that they will be as difficult as they are, but there are some things that I may 
that I will misjudge like web that I think they're more difficult than they are that I, or that I think they're less difficult than they are. Yeah. Um, but like I did know you were a really good flutist. <laughs> like I knew I, I knew Robin had played Cassandra. I knew Robin was doing the three sixty five, which yeah. is amazing. Um, so like I knew I knew I could push you quite a bit, um, oh. <laughs> and and you'd be able to yeah. handle it. Yeah. Where like. Of most players, I just wouldn't try something like that on because right, I yeah. wouldn't know if they'd be able to handle it at all. My roommate and I have obviously renew music or are new music depending on who you talk to, um, and we wanted to commission four works, two from her friends and two from mine, and but we still wanted it to be composers who would write for the two of us and not for me with her tagging along and her or her with me tagging along and from Metamorphose she really likes it and I really liked it and we we're like well that would be a really interesting let's let's see what Sean could do basically <laughs> and gave you free reign to write whatever basically yeah which I don't know if they actually say it was called Resound yeah since their duo was Reno Music yeah. um and like the second movement of that was a palindrome, and I didn't know at that point that Robin uh, liked palindromes. He, he sent us a, the draft or the title, or I, I sent. I think I sent you the just I that think you movement. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, this is awesome! This is a palindrome!" And <laughs> Emily was laughing at me because she's just like, you "Giant, you're a giant nerd! Stop it!" <laughs> yeah, but like that one, that was just like I decided to make that movement a palindrome, and like I did not know Robin was really into palindromes yeah. at that point. Um, but then. Like, yeah. Model 1 is not a palindrome at all, but just, like, the pitch cycle that runs through it is palindromic. Te technically, Mobile 1 was written before Mobile yes. 2, but As I the played Mobile method. 2 first. Yes, because so. Mobile 1 was submitted for Robin's 52 Weeks of Flute Project, and which, depending on when this goes up, is probably either closing soon or just closed, so if it hasn't closed yet, you should submit to it. I think it's going up next week, so, uh, yeah, you, you, have, you, you have until <laughs> April 15th. <laughs> um so yeah that was written for that and like that's like that was something i took more more time with it's also longer or the 52 weeks of, was like looking for up to 10 minutes right so, mobile one is like seven minutes and um definitely a shift more toward uh flute extended techniques yes like very heavily that but direction. we we that one was actually the initials like sound world was discussed in the last time we, you were here <laughs> oh because we yeah. like yeah just kind of try we basically we talked about using flute and voice yeah and uh, I was asking Robin to try various things like voice voice and above flute voice below flute voice moving through right. flute pitch um, and kind of taking advantage of the fact that I have a very very low vocal range especially when I have the flute amplifying it um, and so trying to find interesting sounds to manipulate in, in the context of a, of a larger work. Um, and so I ended up like a lot of the organization of that is like various, various layers that are going through this sort of, this cycle of pitches and each layer has a few timbres it's associated with. Um, like no layer is just one single timbre, but like timbre was a major organizing factor of that piece. Um, and also me that like it takes it's like a minute or two in before just like there's a straight pure flute tone mm -hmm. uh, which is intentional because like then when it happens it's actually like a striking moment not just like yeah she's playing the flute it sounds like this right exactly and I think that that's what always draws me towards more timbral writing is that it really makes the flute special mm -hmm. it makes the flute sounds flute sound so much more important it, it's been so un unfocused that when you get a focused sound, it's a really big moment, and it's not just, okay, flute, great. Yeah. Um, and at the larger scale, at the end of that piece, like, there's finally that the pitch cycle completely clear, um, right. and also clearly palindromic, because um, I knew Robin liked palindromes. <laughs> I like math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, good. But uh, that one was based on Alexa an Alexander Calder mobile, hence the mobile title. Yes. Um, as Calder is my second favorite artist. I, like, I wanted the mobile to be an inspiration for the piece, but I also kind of knew vaguely the sort of piece I wanted to write, and so some of them, like... Didn't really the, fit. Yeah, there was, like, yeah. there was one that was, uh, like, foliage or something. It's, like, a lot of, like, black pieces that are really thick mm -hmm. or something, and it was, like, 
this I, I I'll probably do I'll probably do a mobile based on that at some point but it wasn't like the piece I was matching was this was really really light um, sparse sound yeah. and like snow flurry turned out to be good for that because it's a it lot of did. really like small pieces and they're white so they look fainter um, so yeah then then came mobile yeah, two which I didn't know was coming yeah <laughs> uh, that was that was for Christmas yeah. Uh, yeah, because yeah. because I really appreciated how much my rock music Robin had been yeah. playing, and wanted to send Robin little thanks for Christmas. Yeah, so it's a small piece. It's like, it's like three, three minutes, minutes yeah. and it's like two pages. It's not even. It's not like a dense, like it's. It might be two thirds as long as Metamorphose, but Metamorphose has a whole lot more material to it. Has a lot it. more notes. Period. Yeah, <laughs> like Moba and Moba too. Like it sounds like it has a bunch of notes because it's like flickering. It's like improv improvisation, like mm -hmm. improvisation on a, a few notes in a box, and then flickering through overtones. So like there are a lot of things disrupting it, but it's not. It's not all that many like written out notes. Right, and it's easier to play a lot of notes when you don't have to control them. Yeah. <laughs> like, when you don't have to actually hit them specifically, especially. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, like, I was going for something, again, like, with a good bit of extended techniques, because mm -hmm. that's still Robin's specialty, yeah. but also that didn't sound like most of my Mobile One, because I didn't want it to just turn into the Sean doing extended techniques on flute sound. Right. Um, and <laughs> making, I guess that wasn't really a standardized thing, but I didn't want to make it a standardized thing. Um, and... So yeah, you did. You recorded that one really quickly, which I appreciate. Yeah. Like, since since well, you didn't ask for it, I didn't know about what that might yeah, just sit around for a while, which I was okay with because it didn't. It took a few days to write. And I, the funny thing is, the two mobiles are definitely the like most accessible for me pieces that you've ever that you wrote for me. Like yeah. mobile one, I read through, like sight read through, and was like, this would be a decent performance. It wasn't like. Ex mm -hmm. It wasn't exactly what you'd want or anything like that, but it was like I could have played this in, in front of people and they would have been like, "Yeah, that was right." <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Well, I mean, Robin's. For one thing, I'm just learning more how to write for how what's best for Robin, but yeah. also like Robin's been a good influence on me in general. Like when I'm when I'm writing for other flutists, it's like I I don't write for them the same way I write for Robin. Yeah. Um, like, I, I don't want, like, I, I am conscious of not just making every flute piece a Robin piece now, but, like, there's, I've definitely started using more timbral effects. Yeah. Abyss Luster was a piece I wrote for flutist Emma Resmini and harpist Helwes Carlyon Jones, and it starts out with, like, a low glitz in the harp and the flute doing a technique that Robin taught me. Um, it's the flute covering the aperture, um, which tricks the flute into thinking it's twice as long, and then doing a flutter tongue, um, and because, like, the flute automatically will amplify something, sort of put into it, and then mm -hmm. it amplifies it and puts it down because yes. it thinks it's twice as long, so it makes this deep growl. It was also, like, you, I think, talked about it on C flute, like, this was on yeah. an alto flute, so it's even, yeah. it's an even better effect there. Um, and I, I refer to it as demon flutter because it, it does kind of sound <laughs> demonic. Uh, it's actually a scary, you know, technique that I discovered in a new music ensemble piece that I was like, I have never seen this notated. And then we were talking about it and I made the mistake of telling you how to notate it. It's in that piece. It's also in the piece, a piece that I just did for Daniela, which is for bass flute. So oh, that's going to really? be... Oh, I'm excited. Really low. <laughs> yeah. No, like I, again, I was conscious of not writing Daniela just a Robin piece apart from the fact that you don't do bass flute. Um, yeah. But I didn't want to just not because write. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, but like I, I wanted to make sure it was more toward her writing, but or her playing, but yeah. also like I like there's still kind quite a good number of timbral effects yeah. that like, and she does that some too. It's not yeah. like she's always just playing or tone, but um, like you, I definitely wouldn't have thought to use them that much or that well without your influence. 